Quick announcement. I slash we will be at Con Expo on Wednesday, March 15th, along with a bunch of other YouTubers, Dirt Perfect, Diesel Creek, Captain Kleeman, the usual suspects, in or around the Volvo booth. So if you're at the show, stop and say hi. Also, if you receive a reply to your comment and it looks like it came from me telling you that you've won a prize or that you need to contact me through some other platform besides YouTube, Telegram, or whatever, that is a scam, 100%. We're far too selfish to ever give anything away. I'm okay. This is a mower deck. It's a pretty fancy one. It's a John Deere 60 inch and it's got the auto connect feature. So you have this arm that hangs off your tractor. You drive the front wheels over top the deck and it automatically connects, connects the shaft. You pick it up and away you go. The problem is this one is so slopped out where this arm connects that it likes to auto disconnect. And that's not very handy. So we're gonna fix that, hopefully. Now the easy way to fix that would be just to come in here with a MIG welder, build this up with weld. Same thing with the arm, build it up with weld. Grind it down with a die grinder or a file. Couple hours, away you go. But there's a problem with that. That sounds very boring. I think it's the perfect opportunity to buy a new tool. One that I've wanted for a long time. She's got some gravity in her. This is a press brake attachment for a shop press. 20 ton made by Swag Off-Road. We're gonna have to modify it a little bit to work with my press and maybe to work the way that I want it to work. Anyway, should be a cool little tool to have around the shop. We're gonna use that to bend up these brackets. The guy who owns this mower deck knows a guy who knows a guy who knows how to get some dimensions for these brackets. And he also knows a guy who knows a guy with a CNC plasma cutter and he used those dimensions to cut these out. We should be able to bend them in roughly the right place and cut the old ones off and weld these on. What's this bright white circle in the sky? Probably another Chinese spy balloon. The last step is to weld this big chunk of angle iron in the bottom channel. This becomes our bottom die. Now this press brake is set up for bottom bending. Essentially, if you imagine this is our part that we want to bend, top die is here. Press down with the top die, and this is a 90 degree angle. So in order to get a 90 degree bend on our part, we had to jam it all the way down into the bottom of the die. And then we had to jam it a little bit harder until it pulls away from the walls of the die, because there's gonna be some spring back. And if we jam it hard enough, when it springs back, it should stay at 90 degrees. Now that works, and it's cheap and easy, which is why they do it but there's a bunch of problems with, with setting up a bender that way. Uh, the biggest one is you cannot make this part right here because the length of this, this leg is too short. It needs to be right about here in order to bend it. And 
that ain't gonna work. The other problem is you can't really control the bend radius. So, what's usually used is called air bending, and you control the radius by varying the width of the bottom die. You have narrower dies for thinner material, and then the die is usually made at like an 80 or an 85 degree angle, so you don't have any concerns about not getting a full 90 degree bend. You're not pressing it all the way down into the bottom, You're basically just bending it over the edges of the bottom die. Now there's a couple of ways around that problem. So Swag sells this flat top attachment. It's basically just a couple of plates with slots in them. You slide them apart or together to get a different gap. And it fits right on top of this bottom die. It's pretty expensive. It also has a very limited range. I think the plates are only 3 8 thick, so your maximum opening is probably like around 3 quarters if you want to do a 90 degree bend. The other option is to take various pieces of angle iron and nest them inside this bottom die. They show what, three different sizes here to get you down to 2 and, two and 3 16 between the legs. I think we're gonna go clear off script. So we're not gonna use this angle iron at all. I've taken some three quarter by inch and a half hot rolled bar stock that I had left over from some project and I can't remember. And I laid out, drilled, and tapped five half 13 holes. I've also got some plates here that are 3 8 thick. I'm going to set those in the bottom. Actually, they go the other way. Like so. And we'll set these in here. Like so. Get rid of that. I've also cut some pieces of heavy wall DOM tubing that I had. I've got 10 of them that are half an inch thick and 20 of them that are a quarter of an inch thick. And my thought is we just drill five clearance holes in this frame. We set these big chunks in here and then we stack up these spacers and depending on how close or how open or closed you want the bottom die depends on how many spacers you put in and when you're not using the spacers you just put them on the outside and bolt everything together with big old bolts so we basically end up with a variable bottom die. Now I could make a die, you know, like a four-way die, like a regular press brake uses, but it's not trivial to make one of those. I mean, milling something at an 80 or 85 degree angle is, well, it wouldn't be too bad with CNC, but with my knee mill, it's going to be going to be a project. So we're going to try this. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, we'll just cut all this stuff out and go back to the original angle iron. But I think it'll work. So I think we're going to give it a shakedown before we weld these pieces in place to see what happens. I think it'll work, but you never know. So we're going to set it up on its widest setting, which should give me like two and a half inches between the dies, and then we'll try bending some 3 8 plate. So that's one drawback with this setup. 3 8 would be the kind of the largest or thickest thing that we can bend, but I don't foresee myself bending anything thicker than that. Also, we can't use the back gauge 
but I don't see that really being a problem. This is obviously not a production press brake. So this is 3 8 by about 2 inches wide. Well, that was pretty undramatic. Fantastic! That's gonna work. It's gonna work really well. Cool. Now we can do the actual job. Now I went ahead and flipped it around so we can actually work on it. Man, I don't want those coming off. Get some measurements here before we get too carried away. Let's say 19 and three quarters. Call it eight and three quarters. And we'll just call it 12 and a sixteenth. 10.2. That was the easy one. Let's try the Milwaukee. The torch. A little bit coarser teeth on it. About the same. I'm thinking the best way to lay out the the bend line is just to line up all the holes and then we'll trace and we'll flip it up on its opposite bend and then trace it on that side. Which gives us two sort of parallel lines and then we'll just connect those with a line down the middle should be pretty close these brackets are quarter inch thick so we want the distance between the dies to be eight times the material thickness to get the right bend radius so we have to move one of these quarter inch spacers to the inside It's a little bit tedious, but very universal. It's a little tricky because there's a flat on the bottom of the top die, so you can't put it right on the center line. And we've got a slight problem because it doesn't have full support where this ear comes off. I guess we'll just do the best we can. I'm gonna guess at the factory they just punch these out on a you know stamping press of some kind. Pretty close. Not quite centered. That's it. <laughs> I 
That's pretty cool. I like it. I think we can just give this guy a, a quick tune up on the bench vise here. Something like that. That welded up like absolute crap. And I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's because it was powder coated. I've run into that before. Even if you grind it down to bare metal, there's still some kind of contamination from the powder coating and it just, it just wrecked my welds. But that's why they make paint. Yeah, they're full of bubbles and holes and just looks like crap. I even switched over to the stick welder and tried that. It wasn't any better. I got one good weld. It's okay, I'm not bitter about it. We still have to fix this arm. It has an equal amount of wear. We could grind the welds off here and here, press the arms off, cut the tab off, put in a new piece of three quarter inch bar stock, weld the arms back up and then weld the tab back on. But we don't have all day, so I think we're just gonna weld up the, the worn spots and grind them down. Boring. Pretty good. I don't know how anybody can live without a welder. A thick coat of green paint hides a lot of sins. Looks pretty good. Good enough anyway. Now these ears, I just bent those out with a crescent wrench. No big deal. I can't put the latch back on because the paint's still wet. Like I said, we're putting her on thick. Anyway, you guys get the idea. Uh, in the future, you know, if this happens again, like I said, the easiest way to fix it is just to weld it up and grind it down. But we could probably add, you know, another thickness of plate or two or even three in kind of a C shape here so it doesn't interfere with the latch. Just to give it a little bit more bearing surface might, might prolong the life. A common problem on mower decks of any, any brand uh, up in the front they take a beating too that's kind of the the main attachment that pulls the deck along and you can see those are probably probably pretty well egged out but they don't you know they don't latch like these do that was definitely the long way around the barn thanks for watching